it's Laura with Following the Paper Trail again and today I'm going to do a tutorial on how I do my paper bag albums. I had a lot of requests after my Strike a Pose album as to how I do um, the um, my paper bag albums, how I did the binding like I did on this one with the canvas and that sort of thing. So thought I'd do a quick tutorial. Hopefully you can squeeze it into the 10 minutes because I'm not very good at editing. Um, you can use just standard lunch bags like you get um, in the grocery store. That's this size. I've also gotten some bags at um, Michael's. They're the celebrated brand that's actually distributed by Michael's. And I use the smaller size. You can see how much smaller it is. This is the size that I used in my Strike a Pose album. I have a Halloween album that I'm working on right now that I'm using the next size up, this, which is this size, which is a bit, a little bit smaller than the standard bags. What I find is with these, first off, the quality, and you can kind of see the difference in the quality of them is a little bit nicer. It's a little nicer paper. Um, and then I don't have to trim off um, the ends of the bags. So I dislike using these. It costs a little bit more. They're like $3.29 for a bag of like 16 of them. So they're really not that expensive. But you can use just standard paper bags. Um, and what I do with these is I go ahead and fold the end up, making sure that the loose end is uh, towards the inside when I fold it. Use my bone folder or bone, whatever, whatever this dooley whopper thing is, and give it a nice fold. I then want to attach this down, um, just with whatever your favorite method is, stick that down and fold them up. When you have two of them, this one's not hooked down yet, when you have two of them, then I like to attach this flap end together, so you'll just attach it. Um, stick those together just like so, and then I end up with these units of um, paper, um, a pair of paper bags. I usually make three, two to three of these units like this to make into um, an album. So I've got those all set to go right here. So I have three of those units to where the short ends are attached together. They're going to be in the middle. Then I have a single bag and a single bag that go on each side. So I'll have a wing, then the two pockets of the bags, a wing, two pockets of the bags, a wing, two pockets, wing, two pockets, and then a wing. So at each end I'll have a wing and that's what I will be attaching my um, uh, covers because I use a cardstock cover on them and so those will attach to the cardstock. Um, what I like to do is at this point is when I go ahead and cover them with the paper, maybe get started on some of the decorating, it's just easier to work with a pair of bags and the single bags. After I have those all with the papers covering them, I then will attach these all together, the big open side. I attach those together so that the pockets formed by the bags um, are attached together. And then, as I said, on each side you'll have a flap. I have a Halloween one going on right now where I've done that to where I've got the papers and I've started decorating. Got those in there just as placeholders. I'm going to pull those out right now real quick. Got those in there as placeholders. But so you can see how then I go through and start decorating it. Um, when I attach it to the chipboard, I attach that wing like you saw right here, gets attached to the chipboard. I've covered it with paper prior to attaching it. On this one, it's a little bit larger, so I just attached it at the top along the um, joint and then at the bottom so that it created a pocket so that I could put some tags in there. When I did the strike a pose, I just attached it directly both in the front and the back. So you can do it either way. It just seemed like a perfect opportunity to give me more tag space because I seem to be becoming the queen of the tags because I love doing lots of tags. Um, when I'm ready to attach the last page, I attach this last one to my back 
before I attach it here to the back here. Now, when I attach these, I use that super sticky red tape, and for the life of me, can't remember the name of it. What does it even buy? Um, Art X. It's pro, it's a Provocraft. Ter terrifically tacky tape by Provocraft. That's what it is. Now I use the half inch stuff, and at the end, that is going to become kind of the spine of the book. I use that. I use my ATG to attach it um, at the rest of it. I also, where I attach it to my back, I use the terrifically tacky tape. Now on the back one, I'm going to just attach this whole thing down rather than making it into a pocket. But when I did the front one, I put the tape here, here, and here so that it created a pocket. So I will just, if I can pull this off with my fat acrylic nails, um, we'll just stick this down to the back. But I like this attacky tape because it really sticks. I mean, I can pull up the ATG if I really have to, that tape, but this stuff, man, you just can't. So this will attach. I center it because my back, my, my chipboard, I mean, is slightly larger. So I center that in. Give it a good rub so that it's stuck. And then I'll go ahead and cover the rest of this with my ATG tape, pull off the sticky, and stick it down. I'm not going to do that just yet, but I'll stick it down. So then I end up, my book looks like my chipboard cover, all my pages. But I like to get some of the decorating on the pages so you know how thick it's going to be. So I have it. We'll just pretend that that one's actually stuck down so it's all good to go. Now, the other big question I had was about attaching the canvas. Now, I have painted a canvas cover. Now, I cut the cover twice the length of my um, the chipboard that I'm using, plus I added a couple inches just to allow for not knowing how thick it was going to be. So, I usually allow about three inches twice the length plus three inches because that allows for the thickness of the book as well as gives me a little bit of extra that I can trim off. I also cut it about a quarter of an inch wider than the book. As you can see here, I cut it a quarter of an inch wider. By the time I painted it and blow dried it, it shrunk down that quarter of an inch so I didn't have to trim it in width. So make sure you cut it a little bit wider. Now I painted this with shiny black acrylic some purp a couple shades of purple and some green like I did on the tag tutorial, the canvas tag tutorial. Um, I also like to add a D-ring like I did on my strike of pose here um, to give me a place to hang some fibers and stuff on. So what I did is I just lay this onto my cover and kind of wrap it around, guesstimate about where the center is, and then I marked it with a pencil. Um, with taking one of these Tim Holtz D-shaped split rings and then marked where I needed to punch the holes. Use my crocodile one, the big one, so that I could reach in and um, then put in my um, eyelets, some of those extra large eyelets by making memories. Um, I had some green ones so that worked out perfectly. So at that, so you can see how here's the canvas that's longer. So have that on there, but you need to put those in and put the ring in before you attach your canvas. So I just open the ring up, stick it down into the holes, and close it up. So it's installed before you attach your canvas. When I'm ready then to attach my canvas, I again use this terrifically tacky tape all the way around. I'll use my ATG here in the middle and I will line this up attaching the front so it's right where I want it to be. Then I will bring it around to the back. I will have the terrifically tacky tape and the whole perimeter of the back, the other kind of uh, adhesive in the center and then I will pulling this nice and tight as I do it making sure it's nice and smooth. Not too too tight um, because you don't want your <laughs> uh, book to pop open, but just nice and taut across the back. And then I will go ahead and stick 
the back down after it's stuck down, trim off the excess. So then it, the back just is one or the cover is one continuous piece out and around. Your ring's installed beforehand. Then you're ready to decorate your cover. So, um, but that's all there is for doing how I do my mini book. So hopefully that answered some of the questions that I was getting um, after I did the striker pose. And thanks so much for, for watching once again. And we'll see you again soon.